Magi came from distant places following a star. We come to worship and the star guides us on our way. The Magi brought gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh to offer the Christ child. We bring gifts of ourselves, our hopes, and our dreams. From shepherds to Magi and everywhere in between, all were welcome in Bethlehem. Let us gather together the fullness of Christ born to us this day. Let's join our voices together from near and far as we sing together a blend of Hark the Herald Angels Sing with angels we have heard on high. The words will be on your screen. The Christ child has been born to us. Glory to God, all glory in the highest. Let us spread this good news so that the people will come to know this great love. We light the candles of hope and expectation, preparation and peace, revelation and love, proclamation and joy, and now the center, Christ candle. Let this serve as a reminder to us that Christ is the center of our lives and the hope of the world now and evermore.
With the sounds of great acclamation, a Savior was born unto us. O come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. Our song of reflection is O Come All Ye Faithful. Our gospel reading comes from John 1, 1 through 14, from the New Revised Standard Version. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things that came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify the light, the true light which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world became into being through him. 
Yet the world did not know him. He came what, what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. Merry Christmas. I would like to especially welcome the children with us and invite you in for a time just for you. Don't worry, the grown-ups can listen in too. I brought something special with me today. You may have one in your house. It's called a nativity scene or a crash. You can find figures of some of the people and animals from the Christmas story. A long time ago, Joseph and Mary had to travel a long way from Nazareth to a town called Bethlehem. The journey likely took them four or five days. I'm in Lansing right now, so that would be like walking to Grand Rapids to the west or Holly to the east. Once they arrived in Bethlehem, they found a place to stay and baby Jesus was born. I imagine everyone was filled with joy and very tired. Not too far away, there were shepherds taking care of their sheep. Have you ever been around sheep? They can be very stinky. And the shepherds saw angels and heard them singing and talk about a new baby. The shepherds knew they needed to find the baby the angel told them about, so they did. They found Jesus in an unexpected place in an unexpected way. They shared all that they had seen, and they remembered everything. The nativity that you might see at church or have at home helps us to remember everything, too. In a few moments, Bishop David is going to share a message with us about how we find God and how God shows up all around us and even through us. Remember how the shepherds found baby Jesus in the manger? There are lots of ways that I find God. I find God when I read my Bible. I find God in children's books. I find God in church, in music, and in prayer, in teaching and learning. I find God through my family and friends. I find God in nature. I find God in laughter and tears. Because God came to earth through Jesus and lived with people like me and you, we can find God all the time. Sometimes it's very clear, like when we read the Bible. Sometimes it's like playing hide and seek. Maybe you are going through a hard or a sad time and it seems harder to find God. I wonder, where do you find God? Take a moment to think or share with someone one way or a place where you find God. When our hearts and eyes are open and we're looking for God, God shows up in amazing ways. Let's end with a prayer. Dear God, thank you for the excitement and wonder of Christmas. Thank you for the gift of Jesus, whose life and love show us how to live and love well. Help us to find you in all the expected and unexpected places. Help us to let you show up through us. We love you. Amen. child is this who lay to rest on Mary's lap is sleeping who angels greet with anthems sweet while shepherds watch our
Greetings, friends, in Christ in the Michigan Conference. Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who was and is and is to come. And Merry Christmas. I don't watch a lot of television, news and sports mostly, I suppose. I don't have anything against it, and I enjoy it, but finding time is an issue. And television is so much more complicated than when I was younger. Growing up, we had CBS, NBC, ABC, and PBS. Sure, you, you had to get up and change the channels by hand, but that was not exactly taxing. I do watch some things on streaming services. Recently, Julie and I watched a six-episode series called The Outlaws. I heard about it when one of its creators was interviewed on National Public Radio. A second six episodes have also been released. The series is about a wonderfully quirky group of seven people in Bristol, England, who have been assigned community service for breaking the law. Early on in the show, one of the seven, an internet media star, asks another, can you take my picture for Instagram? Why do you want a picture of this stump? The other asks, for my followers. You have followers, what, like Jesus? Oh no, hon, not like Jesus. He had only 12. I've got 1.2 million. Wouldn't you expect God to show up in big ways? Fireworks, parades, huge multimedia campaign, hashtags, millions of Instagram followers. Certainly God would seek to be an Instagram influencer. You would expect God coming into the world to be of high birth, royal family, or to be born in a rich family, born in a palace or a mansion, wouldn't you? One traditional reading for Christmas Day is the Christmas story from John's Gospel. Yes, this is John's birth story for Jesus, and it has a bit of that multimedia swagger you might expect for God coming into the world. This is a story set on a cosmic canvas you can almost hear the John Williams score. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word was in the beginning with God. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. Thus far, pretty grand. Then a subtler note. And the Word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. You may know the phrase translated here and lived among us might also be rendered something like this, pitched a tent among us, or built a shelter and sojourned among us. 
Eugene Peterson captures something of this in his paraphrase, the message. The word became flesh and blood and moved into the neighborhood. The scene changes from the cosmic to the earthly. But the earthly can have its gloriousness. Red carpets, flashing cameras, palaces and mansions. Yet on Christmas morning, we read John's gospel in light of the reading of Luke's gospel on Christmas Eve. Palace and mansions are not the zip code for the neighborhood into which God moves. No Beverly Hills 90210, no Roman palace, no royal castle. A man named Joseph comes into Nazareth with his pregnant wife Mary as a part of an imperial census. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. A manger, no red carpet. And there's more about the neighborhood into which God moves. In that neighborhood, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. Well, okay, there's some cashmere in the neighborhood, but it has yet to be taken off the sheep. This is how God shows up. This is the neighborhood into which God moves when the word becomes flesh. God comes into this world, this bruised, battered, tired, warring, often dysfunctional, heartbreaking world, which can also be tender and caring and loving and heartbreakingly beautiful. God comes into this world in this way. This is how God shows up. And it leaves Mary pondering in her heart. This is how God shows up. God builds a shelter in a manger, not a palace. God moves into the neighborhood with shepherds, not with celebrities or royalty. In his book, Process and Reality, a title that sounds a little akin to John 1, the philosopher Alfred North Whitehead captures beautifully this way of God showing up. The Galilean origin of Christianity, he writes, does not emphasize the ruling Caesar or the ruthless moralist or the unmoved mover. It dwells upon the tender elements in the world which slowly and in quietness operate by love. God shows up in tenderness, often quietly in the slow work of love. Some of my favorite Christmas stories speak this truth as well. I think of the holiday movie, The Homecoming, the film that launched the television series, The Waltons. A rural family in the Blue Ridge Mountains waits for the arrival of the father, who during the Depression has taken a job in another community to keep the family going. They wait on Christmas Eve during a snowstorm. The story is told in the voice of the eldest son, who wants to be a writer, though he is reticent to share his dream. Shortly after we hear a Christmas story about how animals were the first to see the face of the baby Jesus, the father finally arrives with gifts for the family. Among the gifts he brings are writing tablets for his eldest son, encouraging him to develop his gifts. I think of the Charlie Brown Christmas. Charlie Brown, often glum, wondering why he doesn't feel the spirit of the season, Linus offers the story. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus. A scraggly Christmas tree is given some life. Just hearing the song, Christmas Time is Here, evokes that story again. And listening to that song has become an essential part of my Christmas. I think of the O. Henry short story, The Gift of the Magi, published in the early 20th century. I probably first read it in junior high school. $1.87, that was all, and 60 cents of it was in pennies. Pennies saved one and two at a time by bulldozing the grocer and the vegetable man and the butcher until one's cheeks burned with the silent imputation of parsimony that such close dealing implied. Three times Della counted it, $1.87, and the next day would be Christmas. Della is married to Jim. They are young and just getting by. 
Della's most prized possession is her hair. Jim's is his gold watch, a watch that had belonged to his father and grandfather. Della decides to sell her hair to buy a watch chain for Jim's watch, not knowing that Jim pawned his watch to buy beautiful hair combs for Della. The story ends like this, of all who give and receive gifts, such as these are the wisest. Everywhere they are wisest. They are the magi. Ponder how God shows up. Ponder how God's grace is found in moments where love does its quiet work in the world. Small kindnesses, steps toward justice, compassionate openness, building beloved community, a helping hand extended, time taken to listen, a warm embrace conveying care, small courage to do the right thing quietly, difficult conversations that are nevertheless grace-filled, and in Wesley's phrase, seasoned with salt. Ponder this Christmas day how God shows up. Mary Oliver, in her poem, Praying, writes, This isn't a contest, but the doorway into thanks and a silence in which another voice may speak. God shows up in those quiet spaces in prayer, the silence in which another voice may speak. In the summer of 2021, I visited the Sanford, Gladwin, and Midland area to see how things were coming along a year after the dam failures led to massive flooding in those communities and the surrounding area. I listened to stories of people who had been and were being helped by the United Methodist Committee on Relief. United Methodists respond from the beginning of disasters. When the tornado struck in Gaylord last spring, we received an immediate $10,000 grant from UMCOR to help with the initial response. UMCOR, though, specializes in long-term recovery, working with persons and families who need to rebuild their homes and their lives. They are experts in funding caseworkers who help. And United Methodists continue to work on this long-term recovery. While there, I listened as one man told me that without their help, he would have given up hope. God shows up in small acts of kindness, in the slow, steady work of building a home, a life, a community. In 1996, a congressman from Arkansas, Jay Dickey, led the fight to include a limit on the kind of research that the Centers for Disease Control could do on gun violence. It could not conduct research that would advocate or promote gun control. Dr. Mark Rosenberg was leading the CDC research in this area and was incensed by the passage of the Dickey Amendment. Following testimony at a congressional hearing, Rosenberg considered Dickey a mortal enemy. Yet when invited by the congressman's aide to his office, Rosenberg went. A relationship developed between the two and blossomed into a deep friendship. Rosenberg said of Dickey, when he met someone with views different from his own, he wanted to talk to them even more. They discovered some deep shared values. By 2015, Rosenberg and Dickey together wrote an op-ed in favor of bringing scientific research back into the conversation about gun violence. When Congressman Dickey died suddenly in 2017, his family asked Dr. Rosenberg to give the eulogy. In 2020, Congress resumed funding gun violence research. God shows up in difficult conversations that become grace-filled and seasoned with salt. Steve Hartman is a news reporter for CBS. He provides what were once called human interest stories in a segment called On the Road with Steve Hartman. He has also developed another series, Kindness 101, working with his two children. Kindness 101 focused on words like compassion, fortitude, service, empathy, purpose, courage, gratitude, friendship. Small, quiet stories are shared. An eight-year-old adopted boy who had been badly abused before his adoption, could not cry. He could not cry until his adopted family had to put down their old sick dog. Then the tears came. 
I know how it feels not to be loved or cared for, he said. I don't want any animal of mine to feel that way. He volunteers time at a local animal shelter, and he adopts old dogs. Gil Caldwell is a retired United Methodist pastor and civil rights activist. He marched with Martin Luther King Jr. Retired, he now shares stories of the struggle for civil rights in schools. A few years ago, he shared his stories with a fifth grade classroom in New Jersey, including the story of how he and his new bride, Grace, were refused a room in a Pennsylvania hotel in 1957, a room for which they had a reservation, a room to which they had driven eight hours, refused the room because they were black. The fifth graders to whom they were speaking were aghast. Every student in the class wrote letters to the hotel sharing how they were affected by the story. They asked the hotel, the Mount Airy Resort, to offer the Caldwells a honeymoon redo. The hotel agreed. God shows up in kindness 101. Friends, I'm taping this sermon well before Christmas. I don't know what world events might be on our hearts and minds today, what news story about war or violence or societal unrest or social injustice might be out there. Here's what I do know this Christmas morning. God continues to show up in our world. God continues to shelter and sojourn among us, be neighbor among us in small, quiet ways. It's not that God doesn't occasionally go in for the spectacular, but more often than not, the word becomes flesh in ordinary guise. God builds in the kind of neighborhoods where Jesus was born, still full of grace and truth. The goodness and loving kindness of God, our Savior, appears in prayers spoken, small kindnesses done, steps taken toward justice, helping hands extended, time taken to listen, warm embraces, conveying care, quiet courage, grace-filled conversations, and wherever love does its quiet work to free, redeem, heal, and build beloved community. God continues to show up, and God continues in Jesus Christ to call those who want to let God show up through them. Be those people. Merry Christmas. Oh, yes. Yeah. 
Friends, you can be people through whom God's love and grace shows up in the world. This year's Bishop's Advent and Christmas Offering supports the Readers to Leaders program we approved at last year's annual conference. Readers to Leaders provides funds to help students go to school in Liberia, and it supports our freedom schools here in Michigan. We asked every congregation to raise $600 towards this effort. Even with that, there's more that we can do so please consider a generous gift to this program. Thank you. Shepherd. 
It's Christmas. I hope this Christmas season has been filled with joy and wonder for all of you. I hope you'll take some time to ponder all of the ways God has shown up in your life and in the world. Take time to think about that, but also take time to recommit yourselves to being people through whom God's love and grace can show up in the world for others. Merry Christmas. Blessed New Year.